Hello and welcome to Cabot Media, I'm Grant Abbott and today is part two of Realistic Low Poly Rocks and in this episode we're baking out our pointiness maps for ambient occlusion and roughness or glossiness to make this low poly rock look amazing. So this is where we left off last time and we've got the nice normal map details on our low poly rock. So this is the rock low poly material. What I'm going to do is hide the low poly and go to the rock high poly or the cube high poly in fact. Make sure that's selected and make sure that I've got my rock HP material on here. Now we're still in the cycles render engine. So if I go to the top of the render tab here, you can see it's cycles. I'll change the GPU so it'll actually compute it a bit faster. So we've got our normal map from this high poly, but we also want a bit of detail about the cavities so that we can use it for the ambient occlusion and the roughness. So in order to do that, we press shift A in our shader editor up to input geometry and then bring that in and it's the pointiness node we're going to use. Now when I plug the pointiness node in, you can see a bit of a difference. If I press M on this to mute, it just changes the color slightly and doesn't do much. What I need to bring in is a color ramp to help it. So shift A, converter, color ramp, bring that into the middle here. And again, it won't change much until we change our sliders. So generally, if you move this one up to about 0.4 and this one down to about 0.6, it usually does a pretty good job at that point. If I press M to mute, you can't see a lot in this case. Now what I've done is a mistake that I always make and I'm thinking this isn't working for some reason. It did work earlier. And that's because I'm still in look dev mode and the pointiness node is not supported in Eevee and the look dev mode is using Eevee. That's why it's looking a bit weird. If I now go across the cycles, now we can see the effect of that pointiness node. So if I drag this back a little bit more, there we go, somewhere around here, just take a quick look around. What you're looking for with this is you don't want these cavities too dark. This is just the shadow from the light, but in the cavities here, you don't want them going all the way to black because then you've lost that detail that you want in the blacks. Let's look at the whites as well. And again, you don't want them going too blown out as it were, or overexposed, but you just want a nice bit of detail between the blacks and the whites. So they're sort of fairly gray. If I bring this all the way to something like 0.46, you can see that I'm starting to lose information and that can create a sort of blobby looking cavity mask. Try and keep it away from black. I've got a couple of spots of black there, that's fine. And this is where you want your cavity mask to be. Make sure you look on areas that haven't got loads of shadow because they can be a bit confusing. And you can actually set up more lights so you haven't got too much shadow. So that cavity mask will look quite good. So we need to take the cavity mask from this high poly object to our low poly cube. I'll change the look dev, and obviously that's instantly going to lose it, just to speed up my computer. I'll unhide my cube low poly, and make sure that's selected last, and it highlights yellow. And you'll notice that the material changes to the low poly rock material. So whatever you've got activated, that's the material that's going to be seen. I need to create a new material for this to go onto. So I'll middle mouse click, and scroll across to my new image, and call this rock cav 2. It's already 2048 by 2048. Turn the alpha off and press OK. I need to make sure that that texture is in here. So I can just duplicate this one, shift D and go in and change it. Make sure you change it. Don't write over your rock norms too. So there's rock cav 2. Make sure it's selected. So it's highlighted white and we want to go across to our baking tab. Now we've got options here. The best one to use is actually the emit but we need to change the high poly texture so that it's plugged into an emission node. So let's come out of there and click on the high poly texture. So remember with the node wrangler installed, if you haven't got that, edit, preferences, add-ons, type in node and make sure your node wrangler is ticked and then close that down. I can now press control shift left click on that viewer node. So control shift left click and that viewer node is, as I've said before, an emission with strength one, as you can see there. And if I change the cycles and turn off my low poly, you can see that's the cavity mask that we'll be baking across. I'll go back to EV for speed sake, unhide my low poly, and with the high poly selected, now select the low poly with shift click. It's highlighted yellow, so I know that's the active object. I've got selected to active on, I've got a bit of ray distance, 0.3, because they're overlapping each other. 
I've got my rock cav selected as well in my material, my rock low poly material. Change this across to emit. So it's using the emission node in that high poly texture and press bake. And there's my texture bake info across the bottom there. And then we have our cavity map baked. So let's save that middle mouse button to get to these three lines here. Image, save as, and this is gonna be rock cav two. Let's hide my high poly. I can stay in look dev now because I'm not actually using the pointiness node. I'm using an image node. Let's just plug that into the base color and see what that looks like. And there we've got some nice color coming through. And you can see it's kind of uniformly shiny, which looks okay at the moment, but we can use this cavity as the roughness. So if we plug it straight into the roughness at the moment, it will go fairly rough because it's mainly white, but it's shiny in the cavities and we want the opposite. So we can shift A, convert a color ramp and plug that in. And then with this down arrow here, we can flip color ramp. That means it's the other way around, just like you're using an inverter node. And basically it's flipping the colors over. So if we want it to be really shiny, we can bring up the blacks, or we want it to be rough, bring up the whites. So you might want the very edges of your rock to be a bit shiny like this, but mainly a sort of softish colored rock. You can also change it from black to something like gray if you don't want it ultra shiny or you can just sort of fiddle around until you're happy with the amount of shininess. You can see it across the top there. Generally, I think it's best just to have a bit of shininess. It also depends on your texture a lot and what you want to achieve. Often in games, they have this as a slider so that when it starts raining, it looks like it's wet there. And then when it's dry, they slide it back up again. Quite clever that. Anyway, I think that's looking good. Now I'll briefly show you how you can hook this up as ambient occlusion, but in the next episode, we will be painting the rock. So let's just give it a really basic color. So shift A and we'll go to color mix RGB. This way I can give it a base color, but I can also use my rock cavity as an ambient occlusion. So let's bring this into here and your ambient occlusion always goes onto the bottom one. It's just mixing them at the moment, but if I change this to a rocky color, let's say it's a sort of gray, rocky, maybe slightly bluey color. I suppose let's add a noise texture. So texture, noise, and then from the factor, which is black and white, we'll go in here. So the noise texture looks like this. And that's going into our color, which looks like this. It's just a mixture at the moment. So you can see that noise texture mixed with the rock cavity. But if we change this to multiply, that will take the bottom input and just use that to darken the original texture. So if I put that all the way up to one, you can see the original texture coming through, which is my really bad rock texture, which we will paint next time. And then the ambient occlusion coming from here with the multiply node. So I'll control shift left click on the principled BSDF and we can see the output of our final rough rock, which will look much better when we get some proper color in there next time. So there we have it. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.